Hi, this is Jeff Phillips with SmokingMeat.com, and today we're going to be smoking up some chicken wings on the Camp Chef Woodwind Wi-Fi. And uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take these wings and we're going to lay them out on a pan with a rack, and we are going to let them dry out. Now, by letting the skin dry, uh, that will help the skin to cook better once we once we get it into the smoker. So uh, we'll tell you all about the process as we go along. So let's get started. As you can see, I've laid my chicken wings out on a pan with a rack. This is about seven pounds of chicken wings, just the first couple of sections. And um, we're going to now place those in the fridge overnight. Once the moisture dries from that skin, it, the skin will tighten up around the meat, around the bone, and uh, that's going to hopefully give us a better finish. One of the things I'm also going to do once I get ready to season these is I'm going to mix some bacon powder in with the rub that I'm going to use. So let's get these in the fridge and I will come back once those are ready to season up. I just pulled the chicken out of the fridge and uh, you can tell, let me zoom in on it a little bit here, you can tell that it's uh, the skin has dried out like we wanted. It's become a little more translucent. And uh, that's typically what I do to chicken to help it end up with a better texture. But today we're going to try a little experiment with bacon powder. I've been hearing about this for quite some time and I thought I'd give it a try on chicken wings because it's just really difficult to get chicken skin with that nice crisp um, texture that you know you want without frying it. So uh, what I've done I've taken my original rub, which I would normally use on my chicken. I've used one part bacon powder with four parts Jeff's original rub in this bottle on the left. You can see how the color has changed, the te texture has changed. And I'm going to try that on this particular pan of chicken. Now I've got another pan of chicken just like this, still in the fridge, still drying out even more. And on that pan, I'll just use the original rub just like I normally would with just the just the dried skin and at the end we'll see if there's any texture difference. I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle on some of this bacon powder and rub mixture and I'll put it in the fridge for about two or three hours and let that bacon powder react with the skin. Now supposedly the science behind this is the bacon powder changes the pH level of the skin and uh, somehow through some real sciencey stuff it creates bubbles on the skin increasing the surface area of the skin and that's what supposedly makes it more crispy so we shall see so uh, let's get started so I'm just gonna sprinkle this uh, bacon powder and original rub this is original rub. I, I did put it in a bottle, in an empty Texas style rub bottle that I had, but that is definitely original rub and bacon powder mixed together. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just sprinkle this on the chicken just like I normally would with my original rub. This is about 32 pieces of chicken, I believe, if I counted correctly. But uh, we'll check back here in about 20 minutes. It's been about 20 minutes, and as you can see, some of those juices have come to the surface and mixed with the rub, and they are starting to get that wet look. I did also pull these other, the other pan of wings out of the fridge, and I'm gonna put some original rub on those and put them in the fridge at the same time with these others.
been a couple of hours. I just got the chicken out of the fridge. The one on the left is the one with just the original rub. The one on the right is the one that has the original rub with the baking powder mixed in with it. So those are looking good. I'm getting ready to fire up my Camp Chef and uh, we're gonna do some cooking. I'm just gonna, it's got a little on off button here. I'm gonna activate. That'll make the screen come on. Let's make sure we got plenty of pellets. I think we'll be okay for a couple hour cook. Let's get this thing turned on. Set temp, I'm gonna hit the button one time. It's already set to low smoke. I'm wanting to uh, go ahead and start it up. And I'll start it, up, I'll start it up on low smoke, that's fine. It'll take about seven minutes here. I do recommend leaving the lid open while it's starting up. We'll check back here in just a moment. We're up to about 100, almost 120 degrees. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the chicken on the shelf on the racks and get that get that started so I'll tell you what let's put the plain original rub on the bottom and let's put the one with the baking powder on the top Uh, we'll get that lid closed so we can maintain our heat and uh, I'm gonna let that go on low smoke for probably about probably about an hour maybe 45 minutes then we'll come back and check it and see what it looks like and I'm planning on probably cranking it up to about 400 to 450 after that all right we've had this on low smoke for probably about 45 to 50 minutes it's been main, maintaining right around 150 to 160, and uh, that's what I would expect. Let's take a look at them. At the top is the ones with the rub and the baking powder. One down here on the bottom is the rub only. So uh, let's get this lid closed. I want to crank this up to about 400 degrees now. If you have a smoker where you cannot go that high, um, maybe you can go up to 275 and do it that way. Or you could even, uh, see where it says it's 160 right now, it's 400 degrees set temp. So that'll just start coming up and it'll uh, come on up to about 400 degrees. You could even bring these into the oven in the house if you needed to at 400 degrees and that would be a good alternative. Chicken skin really just does so much better at high heat, but I also like the smoke flavor. So, especially in a pellet, in a pellet smoker, you get more smoke at lower temperatures, and that's one of the reasons I put that on low smoke. You know, during that first hour or so, and then by cranking it up, we're kind of getting a little dose of both. We're getting the good smoke at the beginning, and then we're getting the high heat at the end, and kind of the best of both worlds. So uh, it'll probably take about 10 minutes or so for that to come on up to 400. And uh, we'll just kind of, at that point, we'll want to keep a pretty close eye on them. Chicken wings are sort of like thighs and legs. It's dark meat, it has a lot of fat mixed in. And uh, I'll probably be taking these up to an internal temperature of about 180 or so, maybe 185 even and chicken wings can handle it and they just like pulled pork or brisket they just get even more tender when you pass up that safe temperature of 165. I thought we'd make our honey barbecue sauce while we're waiting. I've got my container here. I've got my barbecue sauce. Now this is Jeff's original barbecue sauce which you can get at thinbluefoods.com and that's the sauce I use on everything. Let's just pour some of that. It's going to be 
pretty generous there. But uh, that was probably about two cups. I've got my honey here. And uh, I don't generally measure this. But I'm probably going to add about a half cup there. And you can add more or less. The best way to do that really is to uh, just pour it in, taste it, and pour it in, taste it. It just uh, gives it a little bit more of a sweet flavor. So uh, we've got that ready to go. The smoker is maintaining 400 degrees right now, and it's been doing that for about 25 to 30 minutes. Let's get a look at these. I want to use my thermopen to uh, test a few of these. So we're getting there. So these down below in just 30 minutes have actually uh, got up to 190, which is not a bad thing for wings necessarily. They can definitely handle the higher heat. Uh, it just means I need to get on the ball. One of the things I am going to do right away, is because that bottom area seems to be cooking hotter, I'm going to move these down there. And move those up top. Kind of switch them around. And uh, that should help us a little bit. I'm going to get some sauce on those ones on the top because they are getting done much faster. So let's leave it at that for now. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and probably sauce the ones on the bottom as well and then we'll come back here and check them in a little bit. I've sauced both sides. Left them in there long enough for the sauce to caramelize a little bit. I'm getting ready to pull these out and we'll do a little test and I'll let you know the outcome. The ones on the left are the original rub. The ones on the right are the original rub mixed with baking powder. And uh, I'll let these cool down just for a few minutes and then I'm going to do a test. But I wanted to give you a, a close up here. Alright, this is my daughter Sarah and I've asked her to help me test these. I have placed one of the types of chicken in her plate and uh, she's going to try that one. Then I'm going to have her try the second one and she's going to tell me which one she thinks is better, if any. And so Sarah, go ahead and give them a shot. Pretty good. Okay, don't uh, don't ruin your appetite. I need you to try another one. I know you can eat about thirty though. This girl, this girl has an appetite. She loves barbecue, and she loves wings. All right. So I'm gonna give you a second one here. Yeah, I'll bring it to you. All right, I'm gonna give you type number two. And I want you to try that one and tell me if it tastes the same or different in any way. Flavor, texture. I can tell there's a difference. This one tastes um, smokier and I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Let me ask you this. Focus on the skin. I think the skin. Um, 
you feel like the skin's any different? I feel like the skin was a little bit less crispy on this one. Just a little bit. Interesting. Yeah. That is very interesting. <laughs> this is beautiful. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, this one's more chewy. So the one without bacon powder was more crispy. Yes. That's interesting because the first one I gave you was original rub only. I cooked them both the same exact way. The second one I gave you had bacon powder mixed in with the rub. I tried my best to keep all things exactly the same. But so your synopsis is that the one with bacon powder is less crispy. I think so. I don't know. I okay. Think we need a second test. Well, I tell you what, we'll let the family try them tonight at dinner here in just a few minutes and uh, we'll see if everyone agrees. Thank you, Sarah. So I had some other members of the family do a little test as well, a little blind test. I didn't tell them which was which. And uh, I think everybody seems to agree that if there is any difference, it's negligible. And of course, I then tried them myself, and I have to agree that I can't tell the difference between them, really. Um, skin's not bad. Actually, the skin's got a pretty good bite through, which is generally what I'm looking for. I'm, I'm, I know there's no way to get that crispy skin that you see when you fry them, doing it in a smoker. But uh, I am looking for skin that's not rubbery, not tough. And we definitely achieved that on these chicken wings. But I think what had a bigger influence on these was drying the chicken skin in the fridge overnight. And of course, uh, giving it about, you know, right at an hour of smoke and then cranking it up to 400 degrees. And taking them all the way up to 185 and 190, even on some of them. Um, had a had a real good effect on these so uh, bacon powder um, I'm gonna keep searching for other methods to uh, help crisp up that skin and uh, it could be that within the bacon powder method that I could leave the bacon powder on there longer maybe add more bacon powder one thing I did want to mention I got to reading online and some people had mentioned getting an off taste from the baking powder. Make sure you use aluminum free baking powder and uh, you shouldn't get any of that off taste. And be sure to use baking powder, not baking soda. But for now, I'm not impressed with the baking powder. So uh, the search continues. But we're gonna go finish these off at the kitchen table and uh, once again, this is Jeff Phillips with SmokeAndMeat.com, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.